Hi, my name is Keith Irish and I'm the Assistant Superintendent of Educational Services for the South San Francisco Unified School District. The Educational Services team created this brief presentation to provide additional information for parents and guardians as they take the reopening survey and choose an instructional model for their students for the 2020-21 school year. Here's a list of key terms and definitions that you will need to become familiar with to assist you in making a decision whether to choose the 100% distance learning model or the hybrid learning model. Families that choose the hybrid learning model will be assigned to a cohort. These cohorts will determine how students will be grouped and the cohorts will determine which days your students will attend in-person instruction and support for the 2020-21 school year. This slide contains scheduling terminology and definitions that will assist you when you're analyzing and examining both the elementary and secondary schedules. In June of 2020, South San Francisco Unified School District created three task force committees, health and safety, social emotional well-being, and teaching and learning. I had the pleasure of co-facilitating the teaching and learning task force, and one of our goals was to determine the instructional model and attempt to create a common schedule throughout each grade span. We used the San Mateo County Pandemic Plan and the four pillars, health and, health and hygiene, face coverings, limiting gatherings, and physical distancing to guide our work. Our overarching principle was the health and safety of our students and staff. That was our number one priority when we were creating the schedules and determining which instructional model was best suited for our students and staff in our community. Here are some of the items that we had to consider as we created our schedules. We want to limit as much as possible student staff contact. We looked at altering bell schedules, possibility of implementing staggering start times, create, uh, implementing block schedules at the secondary level, and creating multiple recess and lunch periods in particular at the elementary level. As we looked through our instructional delivery model. One of our big goals was, try, was to try to create a standardized schedule throughout the district to assist parents and all stakeholders with planning, in particular for childcare. And we want to include time in our schedules for our health and safety procedures for in-person instruction support. So um, having students arrive a little bit early to take their temperatures. So temp temperature checks, ensure that all students have face coverings before they go into a classroom or onto campus. So here's some high level um, information about our elementary schedules. So once we get to phase three, students would attend two days a week of in-person instruction support. Again, it will be determined on which cohort they've been assigned to. So if they're in cohort A, it's Mondays and Thursdays they would be on campus. Cohort B, Tuesdays and Fridays. Wednesdays are reserved for asynchronous learning activities, outdoor learning, counseling, student teacher check-ins, cleaning of facilities, and teacher prep and our staff meetings. So at the elementary level, students would basically on their days, depending on what cohort would be in school from approximately 8.30 to 12.30, they would have to arrive a little bit earlier for health procedures. They will be notified by their site administrator. You'll see that we are some flex time on the schedules. This is an invitation by the teacher staff at the site. We're gonna use that time for targeted small group or individualized support for our students. Here is the elementary schedule, so you can see it. It's color-coded, so if I'm in cohort A, I have in-person instruction from basically 8.30 to 12.30 on Mondays and Thursdays. If I'm, at, if I'm a TK or kindergartner, I'm gonna arrive at about eight o'clock. I'm gonna have recess at 9.15 to 9.25, and I'm gonna leave campus about 12.20 unless I've been invited for flex time.
Secondary schedules, very similar. Again, phase three would be the first time at the secondary level where students would have two days a week of in-person instruction support. Cohorts A and B, same as the elementary level. Cohort A, Monday, Thursday. Cohort B, Tuesday, Fridays. And Wednesday, again, is an asynchronous learning day for all students in the district. Uh, the secondary schedules you will notice are in a block schedule format so they'll take three classes in the fall semester when the students are successful they will earn a year's worth of credit in the spring semester they'll have the opportunity to take four classes if they choose to again students will have to arrive early for health procedures that information will be you'll be notified by your site administrator at the secondary level students basically will be in school on their days from 9 to 2.10. Again, we have flex time at the secondary level, invite by teachers, individual and small group support, and at the secondary level, as well as elementary, we might be using this for outdoor in-person activities for classes such as ASB, band, um, physical education, and career tech. Here is the secondary schedule. You can click in the upper right hand corner if you want to. Um, it will open up. Of course, it's a separate attachment, it's linked. For our families that are considering the 100% distance learning option, so this model is 100% remote. So there is no in person support, everything will be conducted virtually. Designed for students that are immunocompromised or have a pre existing medical condition. We'll give preference for those students um, that have medical documentation to support the request. Again, if there's space available, students um, who want and families who want the remote learning environment, if there's space, will consider it. We're going to match up district staff with our potential students. They'll either be at the site or grade level, and again, it'll all depend on numbers. The district will use district adopted curriculum or use to approve K-12 online curriculum such as Ingenuity. Students and families that choose this 100% distance learning option need to understand that they'll be separate from the district hybrid learning as well as all district and school activities. Students and families in this 100% distance learning option will be will have access to a similar schedule as their colleagues and other students that are in the hybrid learning model. So students will take at least six courses in the distance learning model, English, math, science, social science, two electives. One of those may be physical education. And the big key here is the commitment from our students and families that choose this 100% distance learning option. We're asking you to stay in this program until the trimester ends at the elementary level. So that's 12 weeks or the semester um, at the secondary level, which is 18 weeks. That's just a great uh, point to transition back if families are choosing to come back and join the hybrid learning model. If you have any questions um, or clarifications, feel free to email me or give me a call. Um, and please remember to take the reopening survey before July 15th. Thank you so much.